The number one source of friction in your engine is not what you think. Piston rings rubbing against the cylinder walls generate more friction than any other part of the engine. More friction and temperature means more wear and less horsepower. Fortunately, the team at Total Seal knows how to reduce friction and wear through innovative piston ring design. If it takes a piston, Total Seal can build a better ring. For more than a decade, FTI has strived to become the leader in the aftermarket performance transmission and converter industry. We've joined forces with McLeod Driveline Components under the leadership of Top Fuel Funny Car Pilot Paul Lee and now have a larger distribution network, more resources, and more power. Come see us in the pits and ask how you can join the FTI family. It's not cheating. It is the competitive edge. This is WFO Radio. Hey everybody, WFO Radio is back. I'm Joe Costello, super excited. Just finished up the Lucas Oil NHRA Nationals out there at Brainerd International Raceway, the zoo. The place was packed. It was chaos. We had a long day on Saturday, but we got it in. And the next race on the tour is the Toyota U.S. Nationals. That's it. Indy is upon us. How exciting is that? I am fired up about it. What a great race this thing was. What a great race. Blake Alexander gets the win and Nitro Funny Car, super excited for Blake and Jim Head. And those guys, they work so hard. I always say it, I say it on a pretty regular basis, that I think Blake has got breakout superstar potential, uh, you know, crossover potential, mainstream potential, and uh, going out there and winning races is the only way to do it. And he did it. He got a great win, very interesting, uh, you know, burst of emotion down there in the, uh, you know, shutdown area. We're going to speak with Blake on this show. It's going to be great to kind of hear the story, the behind the scenes of that big final round win against Matt Hagen. And, uh, you know, what was going on out there? Like people have been saying on our ignition show, they called it the Yips Nationals. A lot of red lights, a lot of bizarre happenings, uh, all of that. We're going to get into it here on the show. We're going to talk a little bit about Funny Car. We're going to talk Top Fuel with Justin Ashley. The Skag Machine gets back on the board, third win of the season, and right at the right time. A lot of people have been talking about Justin and the 2024 season, maybe not quite as dominant as the 23 season, but we've we've spoken about it a few times. They're working a program, and the plan at the end of the program is the championship. And so to emerge at just the right time, right before the Toyota U.S. Nationals with a win, is huge for Justin Ashley and the Skag Power Equipment team. And what'd you think of the animals on the side of the race cars? That, that's going to be a big question. Uh, and maybe will be our YouTube comments set question of the week right down there in the YouTube comments. Not so much the live chat, but the YouTube comments because Randy Glady asked me, he's like, what do you think? And I was like, well, what do you mean? What do I think? He's like, should I keep the animals for Indy? People are saying we should keep the animals for Indy. And I'm like, um, you know, what do the drivers think, right? Driver likes his car, driver drives better. Um, but let's ask, what do you think of the animals on all those uh, skag machines? I like them. That would be my answer. Keep the animals, right? Anything that keeps you know the kids interested, a little name on the side of a race car, names on the side of the race car, great. So we're going to speak with Justin Ashley coming up in a little bit as well. Those will be our guests uh, working on Dallas Glenn for the future. Dallas Glenn extends his points lead. What a year it has been for Dallas Glenn. This guy has been strong and consistent, consistently uh, the best driver in the best car over the course of the season, going many rounds, maybe not uh, as many race wins as in the past, but nearly a 200 point lead. We'll be speaking with Dallas Glenn and uh, I'm pleased to, to announce, I'm excited to announce that we'll be doing a U.S. Nationals preview show next week, which is going to be great, which will also mark the return of Alan Reinhardt to WFO radio. And I've been saying he's going to be back on the show and he'll be back on the show next week. So I'm super excited about that. We encourage you guys to share the show and push it out there. We've had some really great videos out there on our YouTube uh, clips, you know, the Jack Beckman clips and the Erica Enders clips have been going so like gangbusters and we really appreciate you. And I know we've had a lot of new subscribers a lot of new people checking out the show and you're in at just the right moment. Honestly, you're in at the right moment because this is when it heats up and when summer starts to end and all the audience, the kids are back at school. The audience comes back. My days in talk radio, the summer with the doldrums, everybody knew that no one was paying attention. And once everyone starts coming back after the kids go back to school, everybody starts to pay attention and it's playoff time and it's indie time. 
And we're going to have a great preview show next week as we lead in to the big go. And if you're going there, we're going to have a big WFO meetup and we're going to hang out. I get in on Wednesday night. We're going to be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. If you haven't already gotten your tickets, I would try to get your tickets. I would try to get out there and be a part of the big go. All right, before we get to our guests, I want to take a moment or two to thank and appreciate our sponsors and our newest sponsor, Jesse Converters, the DPF X Fit brand. I would love for all of you to scan that QR code, uh, heavy and medium duty diesel. And you think of all the trucks that are rolling over the road, maybe a tractor trailer that you would see pulling a nitro car, or maybe, uh, just something that's pulling a, you know, a stacker or all the different levels of diesels that, that you're going over the road. Folks at Jesse make catalytic converters for them. They also have their G sport line, scan the QR code that is up on the screen. You'll learn more. And of course, we're going to have Eric Latino and the folks from Jesse on WFO uh, to talk a little bit about why number one, this is vital. Number two, maybe a little misunderstood and hopefully get a little insight to, they did an experiment. They put a catalytic converter on a pro stock engine just to see what would happen. Like let's test this lost no power which is kind of interesting. Folks at Jesse on board with WFO. Of course, heard a little bit about Total Seal Piston Rings a few moments ago. New episodes of Hidden Horsepower going up. TotalSeal.com. We always say make them your first call, not your last call. And they are definitely the rings that are in Project Pontiac, which continues to evolve. FTI Performance Transmissions and Torque Converters as well. Their racing power glides are unmatched. Go to FTIPerformance.com to find out more. Torque Converters for... Pro modified cars, torque converters for top sportsman cars, torque converters for bracket cars, or even your street car. They're available at JEGS. Go to FTIPerformance.com to find out more information and get on board. Also want to shout out to Randy Neal and his company, CWT Industries. These are balance machines for machine shops. You go in the machine shop and you see all the different machines around there. But if your machinist and your engine builder are truly and genuinely top notch, they've got a CWT balancer in their uh, in their arsenal. It works better. It's more accurate. It's easier to use. It's a moneymaker for the machine shop. And if you'd like to know more or have a personalized introduction, you can just email me, joe at wforadio.com, and I'll put you together with Randy Neal. Uh, really excited that they, those guys are on board. Bernie Speed Shop, Josh Hart, res resurgent. So great to see Josh go out there and get the job done. And that car is coming around. They've been fighting it all year long. He'd been saying he just wants to be friends with his race car. Uh, the fact of the matter is that the folks at Bernie's have got a lot of friends because they are helping people out with frame off restorations, total top to bottom customs, but they also are buying and selling. They'll sell your car on consignment. That is a way to get your classic muscle or exotic car in front of the largest audience. So if you do want to sell one of your machines, reach out to the folks at Bernie's. If you look to buy a machine and make sure it is the best possible it can be, go to Bernie's. Plus, they sell e-bikes and they do a lot right out of their shop in Ocala, Florida. Over 100,000 square feet under the roof at Bernie's. B-U-R-N-Y-Z-Z.com and great run by Josh Hart. Also, the folks at Foggit, an easy way to support WFO radio, comes in a can, comes in this can right here. And it is for the inside of your racing engine. It protects your cylinder finish. You think about that machinist we're talking about moments ago who worked so hard to make the cylinder finish so perfect, but immediately, as soon as you start running it, it starts dealing with all kinds of corrosive factors and it begins to corrode and erode if you think about it. And so your finish goes away. That's why at the end of each day of racing, you've got to fog it down down the carburetor, in the spark plug holes, however you want to do it. You can even do it while it's running, although that is the slightly less effective way because it's, some of it gets combusted. And it kind of pickles the inside of your cylinder walls. But it works on countless other things too. Firearms, it works on firearms. Anything that you want to protect from instant rust and corrosion, protect it with fog it. F-O-G-G-I-T, available at Summit, available at uh, Amazon, and available at Foggit.com. Later on in the show, I'll tell you a little bit about Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School and our great friend Marvin Rodak and even how to become a WFO Patreon. We'll get into that. We're waiting on Blake, guys. Blake, I told him to connect, uh, you know, about 10 after, which should be any moment from now. I want you guys to share the show. Let's build the audience up. Make sure we got a whole lot of people on board for Blake. And let's see what some of the commentary uh, is out there. Uh, Caleb, things are starting to feel normal again. Uh, hearing from Alan and having ignition 
Yes, exactly. Caleb, thank you very much. Alan, back on Twitter, which is really great and uh, super excited. We'll speak with him next week as we get ready for the Toyota U.S. National. Stephen Frisky saying good morning. Everybody saying good morning, depending on where they are from, WFO all around. What was going on in Brainerd? The number 14 qualifier, or let's just say it this just to make it more dramatic. The low qualifier takes out the top qualifier, round one of top fuel. Ida Zedestrom shocks Steve Torrance. Now, those things happen. But in the same race that Mason McGahey takes out the number one qualifier, Jerry Tucker and Pro Stock, it was just wild. It was a wild race, to say the least. Um, I'm surprised the live chat is still available on how tender some of these characters. I don't know what's up with that, Kimmy. I, you know, like in the chat section on the shows, there's a, you know, battling it out sometimes people going back and forth one uh, with one another. I don't, I don't want to see that. You know, I don't want to see that. I want everybody to get along on my program. That's hopefully what it is. Joey Rocket is out there. Really, really exciting. Stephen going to get to Indy on Thursday. Looking forward to meet up with the WFO universe. Yes, we will definitely. And we always do a meetup. We've got a big meetup planned at the stampede of speed. Hopefully you'll be heading there. And of course, Reading, Pennsylvania. So many WFO fans out there. It'd be nice. Somebody to say what happened to Alan. Wow. You know, Ken, maybe that is like, it's one of those things, right? We'll talk to him next week about what he wants to say, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out that it's probably not our thing to tell people. It's probably not our thing to tell people, right? Why isn't why are people revealing the information that we want to know? Why? You wonder why. Ken, you got to think, Ken. You got to think like what what are the potential reasons? Well, it's maybe not their business to tell people. That's probably the reason, Ken. And I'm just being playful with you, Ken. Don't get don't get sore. Don't get sore because uh you know, I've got 100 of tweets. It's not my news to share. So, there it is. All right. I see Blake is signing on. Blake is just about ready to join us. Share the show, guys. Fans of Blake, let's check out the final round. NHRE on Fox, Brian Loans, Tony Pedragon, comp winner Bruno Massel on the interview. An amazing interview. Let's watch the final round, and then we'll get to Blake, our funny car winner. The Nitro Funny Car, final in Brainerd. Here we go. A double step for Hagen. It is Blake Alexander for the fourth time in his career. Alexander drives to a 392.7 at 324 miles an hour. An absolute 180 degree turn of events for this team. Unbelievable. Let's just say that Blake Alexander is excited about this one, and he should be after the huge turnaround you guys had from Sonoma, which probably is about a bad race you could have in terms of what transpired for you in this team. And, the performance that you had here today as a driver, as a as a car, as a team, as a whole, you've got to be pretty happy, buddy, because you would have been tough to beat regardless. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, Jim Head is a gritty man, and I'm very fortunate to work for him, very fortunate to learn from him. And uh, I wanted to pay everything off for everyone that works on this race car today. And uh, it's hard to do, and uh, there's a lot of really good competitors out here. And there wasn't a drag race that I wanted to get to more in my 15 years of doing this more than this one. So I was happy to be here and happy to light it up on Friday night, happy to light it up on Sunday for everyone at Pronto, Scheffler, head contractors. Thank you guys so much, so, so much. Yeah! My favorite part right there. He joins us now, Blake Alexander. How are you, Blake. Joe? What's up, buddy? I'm happy for you, man. That's how I am. I'm happy for you. That was genuine emotion coming out right there. That's what we need. Great job. Thank you. That's all I got. Genuine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. No, that's what. So everybody was given genuine interviews like uh, Austin on his bad light. He just laid it out there. And JR was given great interviews like up and down. And and that was like the capstone on the whole event. The way you went like rushing over your team, holding up the Wally. I don't know if everybody at home got to see that moment, but I saw it. Just the outpouring of uh, the struggle of this season. Just get into it a little bit. Like it's pretty tough out there. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, obviously everyone saw what happened to us in Sonoma last race, and we had probably the toughest you know race I've ever had in my you know 14 years of doing this. So to come back and then you know kind of not know what's going to happen and know that you needed to stay aggressive and uh, despite everything that happened out there, 
Uh, it was really cool to see how Friday night, you know, transpired into us being number one. And then we kind of were able to peruse our way through the weekend and navigate each challenge that, you know, we faced. Yeah. I guess steel hardens steel or tough times don't last. Tough people do one or the other. Uh, I loved hearing you credit Jim head though. And, and that's, he's, he's such a, I don't know. I think he's kind of a mysterious character because everyone talks about him. Like he's a really tough guy, but every time I talk to him, he makes a joke and he's kind of laughing like a little sarcastic laugh. So, uh, talk a little bit about Jim and, and after this race, like, what was that like? Uh, it was good. He's my buddy. I mean, also we were, you know, out on the airplane early in the morning and back to work yesterday. So it wasn't, you know, if anyone knows Jim, they know that we were just working, uh, all weekend this weekend. So, uh, yeah, but we enjoyed the moments that we had that race is special to him. I believe he's won there in 1985 is what everyone was saying to me. And so it's been a little while since we won there. And some of the places he went to after he won, I don't think they were open and we were checking it out around town, but uh, everything's good. And uh, I was really proud of him and happy for him. I don't think people really understand the dynamics that go into running these race cars and choices that you can make with the engine at different places in the racetrack and how it can dictate, you know, whether you're a hero or a zero out here. And uh, he, he did a really good job on Sunday. He took a lot of responsibility. I asked him on the starting line, like, what's been the difference on this team? And his quote was, uh, you know, maybe I got my head out of my ass. Right. But it, it's not that simple. Like there's there's a lot to that. Can no. you talk on well, that? A little bit? I don't know if you guys have noticed our race cars running faster. And with, you know, with that, there's other challenges that arrive, which is that when you have a fast race car, that normally means you're being pretty aggressive on your parts and the processes that you've gone through are a little bit expanded. So um we're learning and everyone's watching us right now and that's just part of the process is we're learning and i think that's what we try to preach to all the kids who work on the race team and i try to preach to myself every day is that i need to be learning and i think he's trying to do the same thing even though he's been around a little bit longer than us i think that's that's good though every once in a while you need new energy and i think Mm -hmm. You're definitely bringing it. So round one, you go up against Dave Richards and you throw down a 92. And I think that set the tone for the day. Like, wow, not only are these guys good in qualifying, like they just threw one of the best runs down in round, uh, round number one to set up a battle against John Force's car. And what was maybe the feel good story of the weekend with Jack Beckman returning and John's Pete Camaro. And it, you know, like getting ready for that race when, it's Jack and John's car. Like that's emotional. You don't want to be the spoiler, but that's your job to be the spoiler. And that's exactly what you did. You spoiled it with a great run. Yeah. I kind of saw that we were going to have the opportunity to do that. If things went our way, um, E1 and, uh, they did in the car, you know, it ran 283 miles an hour to the eighth. So it still had all this, you know, promising horsepower, but it was controlled in the way that we wanted it to. And, um, that was really, you know, it's encouraging to see. I've been doing this for a while, so I kind of can understand when we're doing stuff and it's working well. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And then the second round, I knew that was going to happen. And I knew he was probably, you know, he raced our team car before. We call Bodie our team car when he runs good. When he runs bad, he's not our team car, though. And uh, <laughs> but and he, it was cool to see him take a big shot at him, actually. I kind of want to open up on that a little bit because I kind of talked to him about staging the car shallow and driving the car the right way. And that way you could see exactly the performance of the car each time and learn about it. And you can learn about yourself as a race car driver too, and find out if you're actually good at it or not. And uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting to see him, but I got to kind of go up there again and do what he did. And we just ran a little bit better and the conditions were getting a little hotter, which kind of and we just lost Blake, like the quickest drop that I've ever seen in the world. Like he dropped off faster than a nitro car leaves the starting line. He's coming back, but man, that was a quick drop off. We didn't lose very much. You were talking about Bobby as your team car and how you were assisting him. And then it just dropped like that, but go pick, pick it right back up there. Oh no, you're good. I was just saying that he, um, I've been trying to teach him kind of how to do the things the way I do them, which is just where you stage the car shallow and drive the car the right way so that your team is rewarded equally uh as you are because you kind of learn how good you are at driving if you're sitting back there at the back of the staging beams and everyone else can go do what they want but um yeah and it was cool to see him take that shot we kind of thought he won because he was out in front of him and you know like they're pretty small they're a smaller team than we are and we have four full-time employees so uh, <laughs> uh it was cool i knew we were going to get the opportunity to race back many too 
probably if we did took care of our P's and Q's and we just tried to do our thing out there. I knew they were going to give me a good car and I just needed to kind of do my thing and, you know, not Left screw first, it up. 67 yeah. on the tree. And, and to elaborate on the team car, for those that know about Bobby Bodie, like he's, he came out on the Western swing with you guys and has been eager with Dave Leahy to learn and go what he called. I forget what he called it last year, but it was like summer school. And yeah, I mean, are you we, comfortable we, with being the old guy though, Blake? All of a sudden, someone pointed out you were the oldest guy on the winter circle stage. That can't possibly be. No, it is. I mean, I'm an old guy. I'm 35 years old now, and I've been doing this for 14 years, I guess. So, and I want to see young people kind of get more of an opportunity. I would say than I don't know how to properly say this. I had to really, 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 really work to get to where I was, you know. And I feel like some of the information was concealed to me for no reason other than egos or um, lack of, you know, people just didn't want to help me. And I finally did kind of, I realized when I owned my own car and Dave would give me his time for some reason, he gives everyone his time. So I kind of realized it wasn't anything special, but um, you know, I just, I just learned, I, I, I've enjoyed being over here learning about the cars and I've enjoyed sharing everything that I learned to the younger people who, who show that they care. That's awesome. No, that's what it takes. Yeah. And that's what our sport needs, by the way. Maybe once upon a time, there were so many people that were trying to get in that uh, there had to be like walls up. Now it's not exactly like that. It's it's a tough deal. And we're trying to grow. All right, let's uh, let's move forward. Chad Green, semifinals, weirdness. He launches on nothing. It happens again in the final round, which is a bizarre coincidence. It happened to Ida. It happened to a lot of people that were just, you know, I don't know, amped up. Um, what, what it was your view of those two runs starting with the semifinal and then ultimately the final against Hagen? Well, I don't know if you saw, I just, on Chad's, I left on noise, I think, because I hit the gas. I actually saw the tree against Hagen and I mean, I don't really know. They hadn't run faster than us all weekend. So I don't really know. They probably were going to have to try something to come meet us. And we ran exactly what we wanted to. So I don't know. That's really not for me to even talk about. I don't really care. I just know the wind light was on and I did my thing. I saw saw the tree hit the gas, drove the car straight and got to show my boss what we were trying to run. I knew exactly what we were trying to run and that was what we ran. So it was cool. Yeah, it's I think it's just I do uh, think I do think to open up on that. It was a weird race in that there was a lot of people that uh, I don't want to say I got exposed at the last race at Sonoma, you know, on Sunday morning. I lost on a whole shot. And people were getting exposed out there. If you're not on your P's and Q's in NHRA professional drag racing, they send you home quick and your weekend's over quick and you are left to wondering what could have been. And you got a lot of time in between. You don't have any extra laps to go make it up and fix it. You know, it's just, that's it. So I, I love that word. I love that saying exposed, right? Cause it's tough. Uh, it makes perfect sense. There's two people on the starting line. The entire world is watching. Something's going to happen. What's it going to be? And if you know, you get left on, you run quicker. Ouch. That's, there's no better way to say it. Yeah. I mean, people put a lot of effort into showing up to these things and they put their own time, money, family, everything. You're I'm pretty much putting everything on the line, you know, when you go out there and do this. So I really want it to go well. <laughs> That's all I can say. And uh, at times that doesn't bode in your favor if you want to go, you know, if you're trying too hard. So. Well, and that's the other side of it, right? Like you can push too hard and it takes you out of your zone. I mean, I've, I've bracket race and whatnot, but never had to summon like the limits of my ability to react. Like that's a different thing that I can't even imagine how challenging it is. And everybody's so good right now, right? Like funny car, top fuel, pro stock, all the pro categories. It's, it's very, I don't know how different it was than 10 years ago. Maybe you tell me, but it looks vicious it's out different. there. It's different. It's different. And people get to see that if they come back out and play in the waters, you know, um, that it was about a decade ago that Matt Hagen made everyone speed up a little bit. And I would say that it hasn't really happened like right. I mean, Prox had to have made some people speed up a little bit and JR's answered the call and it's been fun to watch him drive this year. And other people kind of have to answer the call if they want to come and meet that race car anywhere, anytime, you know, you kind of have to like, uh, you've never had to really do anything like that before. And as long as I've been doing this, and I, I mean, I would say maybe someone, if you were racing in Steve Torrance back when he was doing all that, he was doing really, really well driving, doing really, really well running the car. And there was just, it was steady, but this is a little bit different where this kid, 
I did make fun of him a little bit on Sunday night. He was being really fun with me and hanging out. And I said, some of us didn't hate to see you make a mistake for the first time this year, buddy. <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was just, he, he's really solid and his family's really solid and they are really, really, really doing a good job this year. Well, you know what? And, and also that interview he gave where he like just destroyed himself in front of the world for his mistake I, I thought it was great because th I think that's why people like people. And you've given some really good and honest and genuine interviews. And Jr. I was so impressed with his interviews of roller coaster ride he was on uh, with the the body and, and whatnot. I think that's what creates fans of the sport. People won't yeah, change I mean, the channel. People like to see people go up and down. And you know, when you drive funny cars, you go up and down a lot. I mean, some of the stuff that happened to me, if it happened in top field, guys would wipe the wing off and maybe ask their photographer if they got some pictures and um when you go through it in a funny car man my body was pretty banged up after the sonoma race and my back and head and everything neck so i was just trying to make you know make it i i went immediately back and like started working out immediately and doing everything like it was normal but it wasn't normal and i was telling leah how i tried to run the first day and i couldn't run and then the second day I could kind of run at my normal pace again. And then eventually, like I knew I was going to be okay when I got to Brainerd and uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. People don't even think about that. I mean, I, maybe some do, but, but, but they don't Mark Rabilis with some great photos uh, from the winter circle, just a tremendous who's getting the bath here. Who's getting the champagne bath or the uh, cool that's bath? Dylan. That's Dylan's dad, Shane Cromwell. And uh it was really, really cool to have them there. I was taking videos of uh, them working together, him and his mom. Uh, Tiffany and Shane were working together on the car. And Shane was actually, like, mixing nitro and measuring the tires. And, you know, he had a pretty important job so much as that I was like, dude, Jim can't yell at him. This is crazy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, we were making jokes about everything and just having fun. And they're great people. And, uh, obviously, what happened in the past is something that happened to Jim, Dave, and I. And um, uh, Glenn and Chris and all the other men who were around when that happened, uh, we kind of wear it still because you can't not wear it when someone young like that is taken away from you. And it was cool to have them with us. And I really appreciated them being there and just their nature of positivity and having Kevin there too. It was really cool, their son. Amazing. You know, uh, earlier in the day, I saw Jim – uh, as you were staging the car, he, he tapped on Dylan's face on the side of the car in uh, mm -hmm. like a very, very personal, uh, way, which of course that, that makes sense, but to know, and I didn't know that they were there and they were helping you and you won, like, that's another layer that I'm just realizing, like right in this moment, Blake, that's great. Like incredible way to, way to bring it all together. Yeah. I don't even have the trophy. I gave it to them. So, you know, it's, uh, they, they, they're a part of our family. That's all I can oh. say. Um, amazing yeah there's jim head all right let's uh let's ask you how how'd you celebrate you know the zoo and all that sunday night you don't have to tell yeah, us I, tell didn't, I honestly didn't want to go and then austin and some people like convinced me chad green um basically some of my friends who aren't good influence i'm just kidding but uh <laughs> <laughs> that i needed to get on the, the golf cart and go make a lap around the zoo so hunter and i did that and that was really fun i got to spend some time with some fans and it's really cool to see that like a bunch of them are pumped that some of the pictures that we took while we were out there made it up online. And um, yeah, I mean, it was just a surreal day, like I said, with everything happening leading into it. And then, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to get my voice back now. And uh, it just, it just seemed to be, you know, meant to be in a way, even though I would have never imagined it that we would show up there and rip on Friday night and then kind of figure out how to get it done. So amazing. All right, let's look ahead. It, it's going to be great for you guys to roll in to the 70th Toyota U.S. Nationals as the most recent race winner on the tour. Last mm -hmm. year, Antron and Ron Caps won Brainerd, went on to win Indy. You know, that's just random, uh, like, numerology. But there's got to be something to the feeling of confidence. Give me a little Indy preview for yourself, your team. What are you doing? What do you got going? And uh, talk a little bit about the biggest drag race on the planet. Well, we're still recovering from Friday night in Sonoma somewhat. I mean, I know that sounds kind of strange, but you, when that happens, it's a long process to get everything back up to the level of inventory that you want and um, just make sure everything's been treated properly. 
and we're getting a new body back in the works and it should be done like in Indy right a few days before. So we'll slap all of our Pronto stuff on there. We have a great event and it's going to be happening with XL parts. Uh, they had an acquisition there a couple of years ago and uh, we really like enjoyed having people up there grow into our little niche of uh, NHRA drag racing and uh, the Pronto Nitro club. So uh, yeah, it'll be good. Cars fast. Uh, obviously I think it might be hotter and Brainerd is a little bit of a fairy tale racetrack where you can, you can throw stuff at it. Like, and just a lot of different things will work on that nice racetrack and Indy, you know, it'll be a little bit hotter. It typically is. And maybe we'll have to look into, you know, running the race car kind of like you ran in the second round or third round yesterday. Interesting question from one of our members of the audience, Blake, who is a super fan. Like what, what kind of things do you do around the shop do around the week to help the team? I think you're the money guy, right? Like you're chasing. I, I, bucks. Yeah. I haven't been, I haven't been to the shop since uh, COVID April, 2020. Um, so, I mean, I don't really go into the shop and work, but I uh, have a different responsibility, which is to help uh, bring sponsors to the race team and connect the dots on all that. So. And uh, no, that's great. That's great. And um, Dan says, uh, you know, do you race for a living? Like, I think that's the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. Professional <laughs> race car driver. Does that make sense to you? You know, here you are. You've been doing this. You said 14 years, professional race car driver in the NHRA. And um, it seems to be working out and getting better. Yeah. I mean, it. it's ups and downs. I didn't really think that if you had told me that we would be doing this interview after I left Sonoma, I'd probably be like, what? But yeah, uh, that's what I do for a living. And I had the good fortune of working for Jim and it kind of allows me to find the sponsors and connect the dots with all these people in business. And I kind of run the Pronto program uh, with a few really nice young ladies. Um, and then we keep all the customers coming, keep the promotions running, keep, uh, keep as many auto parts flying off the shelves as possible as we can for our sponsors. What's this hat you've been wearing the past couple of days? It's all black. It looks cool, but is it? Uh, I don't know. I bought it. I bought it in the Boston. I was out uh, with Jordan Vandergriff and he was leaving to go to the Red Sox game. And I was like, didn't know what to do. So I just went and bought a couple of hats and I've been wearing them. I don't know. Everyone keeps asking me that. I just, I guess I need to get my own hats made, but I just am too busy doing other stuff. <laughs> Well, people are clearly paying attention. Blake, is there anything you want to say to the WFL universe out there before we let you go as we get ready to this go to this critical time of the season? I always say Brainerd is like one of the last like really fun. They're all fun, but you get what I mean. It's about to get really intense. Uh, hopefully, you guys. I are think people were. No I think people were noticing that a little bit on Sunday that it's about to get really intense. <laughs> yes. Because, uh, if you don't have your stuff figured out right now, um, you probably don't have it figured out all year. So. Yeah. You're yeah. seventh in the points is uh, are you guys going to be able to run for the championship? You're going to make top 10. Are you guys going to, you know, like, yeah, is that, I don't even, I don't even know if we're going to go to all the races in the countdown yet. And I don't, I don't, you know, I think we're going, we're going to go to most of them, all of them. And we'll probably get up pretty <laughs> and try. I don't understand why people like, I go there and try to win every time. So I'm technically going to try to collect as many points every time. I just honestly didn't even know, like, how close it was until I got to the racetrack this weekend and that all that stuff was going on. So, yeah, but, um, yeah, I don't really have anything to say about it really other than we kind of figure it out on the fly and we're running all the races except for one for the rest of the year right now scheduled, but maybe if we find some more money, we'll go to another one. That's exciting. Listen, man, you're doing great, yep. doing a great job. And, uh, I really love in your interviews too. Like people want to see that. And so keep it up, keep going. We'll see you in Indy and congratulations on this win. So many layers to it. Uh, every time the Jim head team wins, he's got so many fans out there. Um, you, you as well. So good job, Blake. Thank you very much for coming on WFO. Yeah. Thank you. I used to have to beg you to come on the show. So it's kind of nice that you have to ask me this time. That's <laughs> not true. I never made you beg. You said, Hey, can I come on the show? And I always said, yeah. I po politely asked. I politely asked. Early on. You were right. like, I don't know if this was your first interview or what, but yeah, we've been doing this a long time. I guess I'm old too now. Thanks. Yep. All right. All right. Well, it's good to see you, man. Later. Take care, buddy. Good job. Good job. Blake Alexander Bye. with us here on WFO Radio. A tremendous victory. A popular victory. is one of the, uh, you know, like I would call him a racer favorite, right? In the pits. Like everybody likes Blake. They want to see him do well. Jim Head as well. And they did well. And so... 
what will happen sitting seventh in the points, 540 out of the lead, but he's got some points up. Uh, Paul Lee in the top 10 as well. Those two have to be in the top 10 because they did not go to all the races. Alexis and Cruz and Buddy and Dave Richards, they don't have to be in the top 10 because they have made an attempt at every race. And I know we've debated that uh, in the past, but I don't know. I kind of feel like it's working out a little bit working out, uh, but we'll see. All right. Our next victim, I mean, guest is in the ready room. Justin Ashley going to talk a little bit about his tremendous victory, a big victory right at the right time. But first let's watch the NHRA on Fox call of said victory with Brian loans, Tony Pedragon, Bruno Massel comp winner at the race uh, on the top end of the racetrack with a big interview. And someone texted me like Justin seemed much more emotional. Uh, like as if this win was more meaningful, we'll ask him about it. But after we watch. Ashley was out first and he gets there first. 374, five at 329 miles an hour for Sean Langdon, a slowing 402 at 261. So for the third time this year, Justin Ashley is your top fuel champion. Justin, it's been a little bit of a slump for you guys. You started off fast, went through a slump and it looks like you're peaking at the right time. You left first, you outran him. Does it get any better than that? No, it doesn't. This was fantastic. Um, what an incredible weekend. You know, the first burnout we did on this new chassis, on this new car that we have was Q1 here this weekend. And I think right now we're hitting our stride for us. It's all about the countdown and preparing for Indy, which is which is the next one. And uh, this was an all Team Toyota final. But to be able to put this car specifically that has all the touches from everybody, Metalcraft and Mabel, right into the winner circle is just feels so good. Mike, Tommy, and the guys, this is because of them. They work incredibly hard. They put this car together on short notice. And uh, Randy, Maria, everybody at Metalcraft of Mayville, thank you guys for everything that you do. Mac Tools, Lucas Oil to Lucas Oil Race, Impact, Cotto, the list goes on and on. It's because of them that we're out here doing what we do. Great job, team. Thank you to all our Skag Power Equipment dealers and distributors out here this weekend. I was riding like a cheater, a turf tiger all weekend. So awesome job, everybody. Justin Ashley, and he joins us now here on WFO Radio. All right, you tell me, Justin, more meaningful? You looked a little more emotional and appreciative. Not that you don't, but it had been a minute. Yeah, um, I think they're all meaningful. They're all unique in their own ways, and each one is better than the next. But this one in particular, I think, was a bit emotional just because of how everything came together. You know, the guys worked incredibly hard. We had this new car built, but they still had to do all the plumbing and all the electrical and get it ready in a really short period of time. And that's one of my favorite parts about any trade drag racing. It's so easy to see everything that happens out on the racetrack, but it's all the preparation that even allows you to be out there. So the guy spent a lot of time at the shop, spent weekends there getting it ready to go. And I just love the fact that they could see all of their hard work to come to fruition. And we started running well throughout the weekend and throughout qualifying, but just to see the kind of consistency that we had on race day after a few races where we probably didn't perform up to par up to our own expectations. Um, you know, it was really meaningful us and uh, really meaningful for the guys. That is tremendous. Uh, some congratulations out there from Monica saying congratulations to you and your team. Uh, Steven say great to see one of the SCAG cars in the winner circle fast Eddie saying congratulations as well out there in the WFO uh, universe. And uh, Derek wanted to, to make sure that uh, that was in fact a new chassis. I think you told us earlier this year that you were going to be breaking out a new car at some point before the U S nationals. And I will admit to maybe speculating is whether whether or not that's a good idea right before the countdown and clearly first race out you win yeah i guess it's a pretty good idea yeah i guess so i mean look it's only one race we don't need to look any further ahead than that obviously it looks like a good decision right now but this sport is so hero to zero you saw it with a lot of people on sunday you've seen it with us throughout the entirety of the year so we're not going to look past indy we're happy with the results that we have on the new card yes it is a brand new chassis it just happens to be going along with a brand new wrap. Um, so both are brand new. But, yeah, we're happy with the results after one race. We think that we're moving in the right direction. But we certainly have a lot of improvement that we need to make. I always have room for improvement as a driver. Um, and I really want to thank Randy, Maria, and everybody at Skag Power Equipment, Metalcraft of Babel, Skag Racing, all of our dealers and distributors for allowing us to be out here and 
not only do what we love and accomplish what we do on the racetrack, but help to give us the resources like a brand new car um, from everybody at PBRC that helps us to be successful and find success on and off the racetrack. All of that stuff um, really adds up to a great culture, a great organization, and hopefully a championship along the way. All right. So let's uh, do a little homework for Mr. Glady, who pulled me aside uh, this yesterday or, or Sunday, and we were talking a little bit about it. And I just went over to him and I, I said, uh, cause we, you know, chit chat on the starting line every once in a while. And I was like, you know, Hey, I, I really like the animals. Like I like the animals, whether it's related. See, I first, I did not know that every one of the skag machines has actually got a name that is associated with an animal. So the fact that as we unfolded the layers that these animal characters, maybe the characters were new, but the names were not new. This is part of skag. And he's like, you know, it was so funny because he's clearly a very decisive human being. He goes, I'm locked up on this. I don't know what to do. It's like, what do you mean? He goes, people want us to keep the animals for Indy, but I don't know if it's the right thing to do. I go, well, I like the animals and I think kids like the animals and drag cars with names are really good. He goes, yeah, but I don't know. I kind of want to keep them and I don't really know. I was like, it's always a good idea to ask the drivers because the driver that likes his car is a good driver because that's a really good idea. So let's talk about it right now on WFO. Justin, Judge Justin. You're back. You're on the spot. <clears throat> keep the animals or go back to the traditional look. We're going to go ahead and keep the animals. And he did take your advice. Um, he did ask the drivers and he asked the teams. And we appreciate that very much. I think win or lose, we would have wanted to keep the wrap anyway, just because the feedback has been so good. Um, you know, love, serve and care is what we're all about at Skag Racing. And um, that goes for the fans as well. And they show us so much love. And we want to show that love back. They gave us tremendous feedback with the new wraps. They love the way each of the wraps looked. Our car, sure, but the Richards Brothers car and Daniel Workerson's car as well. Um, so we love that. Had a bunch of kids uh, run up and take a look at the car and like the different animals. Um, it looks fast. It was fast. So all in all, um, thank you, Joe, for speaking to Randy and giving him that advice. And we said, um, Judge Justin said, yes, travel <laughs> down. We're keeping it. <laughs> There you go. Look at us bringing like two bits together in this one yeah. deal. Well, AJ mentions uh, or Derek mentioned snake and mongoose animals. Uh, everybody out there saying and, and our YouTube question of the week for the comment section, should they keep the animals down there, which is really just a way to get people to comment on our YouTube video so that the algorithm puts it out there. But, you know, we're not hiding the fact that we're trying to trick the algorithm. Um, but it was a good looking car and you got the job done, starting off with a win uh, over Billy Torrance and you guys are seven and eight going out there, 14 car ladder. Uh, you got down the racetrack to set up a matchup against Tony Stewart. So Billy tough, Tony had his best run of the year. Like this was a very challenging performance themed race. It was, uh, usually they are when you're in the middle of the field and we qualified seven and eight when we went up there to race Billy in the first round. And, um, really we thought to be completely honest with you, we were going to be the first pair out there and, we ended up being the last pair. So we were able to watch some of the pairs go down in front of us and make the necessary adjustments. And I think one thing that was really helpful for us was Q4. Um, we ended up running in that last qualifying session, I think a 374, and it ended up being probably fifth or sixth quick of the session, but it was the quickest before it rained. So once it rained, it started cooling everything down. But based on the track temperature, a 374 at that time was a really good run. And we to take that and learn from it and apply it throughout the rest of the day, starting in round one against Billy. And, uh, man, Billy, whether it's Billy or Steve, those guys are tough. I have a lot of respect for those guys over there. And we certainly didn't want to take ourselves out of the race. And um, we did not have lane choice. So we wanted to make sure that we were able to get down the racetrack and run relatively quick. And fortunately for us, we turned on a wind light, learned a lot from that run. And, you know, definitely had to apply it. We, uh, we had a lot of really tough matchups throughout the day. Yeah, they kept coming. Josh Hart, resurgent. They had been a little bit in the wilderness for a couple of, uh, you know, the, the end of last year, the beginning of this year. But now they seem to have found their performance. Uh, he was, uh, you know, he was good on the tree. You got through Josh to set up that final round against Sean, which always gets me excited because it's like strength versus strength on that. Sean, a, a former champ and everything he's done for the most part, known for his starting line prowess, as are you. They got great resources. You now have great resources. And it was just an awesome, awesome uh, setup for the final round. Yeah, there are a few guys in particular that I really enjoy racing against. Um, anytime I get behind the wheel, I have an absolute blast. I try and make sure of it. But Sean Langdon is one of them. Um, Antron Brown, Doug Coletta, 
um, Tony Stewart. There are a number of guys that um, I kind of try and model my driving style after. And um, those are just some of them. I don't want to leave anybody out. There's a number of other really good drivers out there, but those ones are fun for me. Sean is a really, really cerebral driver. Um, he understands these cars just as good as anyone. And I think a large part of that probably just comes from experience, even in bracket racing. So to be able to line up against him, you know that the margin for error is super small. So try and be on your A game um, the best that you can. And I felt like we had a really good car going into the final round. But um, as far as I'm concerned, Sean is a winner. They have a lot of really good resources, but they have a lot of really good brain power over there. But um, obviously we do too. You know, Mike Green and Tom Delago, they've been going back and forth in the lounge um, all day long trying to strategize. And we were able to really find that 374 to 376 window all day long. And sometimes that's what it takes to win. And um, to be able to go down the racetrack and win like that, um, have real consistency throughout the day, I think kind of just brought a sense of stability to our organization and our program. And we've got to carry it forward. But man, what a tough day from Billy to Tony Stewart. What a tough matchup that was. Josh, who you knew it was only a matter of time before he was going to start getting things going and the way he leaves the line to Sean in the final. Um, there, there was barely any room for breath until the race was over. Yeah, when it was over, though, as you came around the corner, uh, I thought it was cool how you you and Sean had a moment. And even when you got champagne on his car, he was like laughing about it. <laughs> I didn't know that until you said that. Was it me or was it the other drivers who got it? Was it was everybody with bottles. Okay, I didn't, I didn't it's mean Bruno, It's Bruno's fault. It's really TV's it's fault. Bruno's fault. Get up I'm there. Sorry. You got to pop the bottle in the head. I don't even, I don't even drink. So I was trying to go everywhere except, except for on me. So I apologize if I got in his car. I didn't mean to do that. But yeah. hey, listen, he's a good sport. I enjoy my conversations with him. I've tried to learn from him as much as I can. I think I've convinced myself that he knows more than I'll ever know because he'll have conversations with me where he's like, listen, as soon as you left, I knew you left by two hundredths because you were this distance ahead of me. And I knew I had a whole lot on the right side. I'm like, dude, I don't even know what you just said. I'm still trying to process where I am on the racetrack. So he's just that kind of driver, that kind of guy. And I um, always appreciate my conversations with him. No, he really is. He's one of those savant type characters. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, for drag racing, he's he's uh, like a, a prodigy pretty much. Yeah. Um, and he, you know, he's happy this year. They're running well. Uh, second in points. Doug's first. You're third. 105 out uh, with a pretty decent gap to Steve behind you. And all the way back through Antron, you guys are countdown clinch going into the big go, which is points and a half. So I would imagine you're, you know, you're looking ahead to get as close as is possible to the top of the points sheet for the reset. Um, but also just winning the U S nationals. Your dad won the U S nationals. That race is the one that everybody wants to win. Uh, let's, let's look ahead to that race and the single significance of the U S nationals and how big a deal it is. Just uh, speak on it a little bit for our fans. Yeah, it's huge. Um, you know, my dad run that won that race in 2007 in funny car. And, uh, I was up at the top end and ever since that moment, <laughs> I've always wanted to win that race more than any other one. And it's just prestigious as a driver and as teams and as crew chiefs, whatever your role is, the two things I think generally that stick with people the most are how many times and have you won the U.S. Nationals and how many times and have you won a championship or championships. So this is a big one. This is really prestigious. Um, a special thank you to Toyota um, for now being the new primary sponsor of the U.S. Nationals this year. That adds another interesting and fun dynamic and element to it for us being a Toyota car. Um, it's just a really meaningful and prestigious race it's a long weekend with the extra qualifying session you get to learn a lot before you actually race on labor day on monday but um everybody is on their a game because it's the last race of the regular season they're all preparing for the countdown but our guys are focused just on indy right now um everything we do of course will have the intent and purpose of being ready for the championship and the countdown run but we want to win indy it's a prestigious one it's a big one that's the one that everyone wants to win so Everybody's going to be uh, dueling it out throughout the day. I think last I heard, maybe there were 21 cars registered. By the time we get there, there might even be 21 or 23. So I'm sorry, 21, 22, 23. So um, I think you see a really fast bump spot, especially with that last or added extra qualifying session. So uh, competition is going to be stout and uh, it's a prestigious one. Yeah. And uh, the cars that, you know, Zizzo's going like all these cars that are really good quality cars. I hear trips going. I that uh, they, they're not full time cars, but they can cause headache for the full time cars. And 
this is that one off. It's like the Indy 500. It's like the Daytona 500. Nothing else matters but winning this race if you can do it. Do you have anything planned for the week that you're going to be involved in? Any uh, Justin Skag related uh, fan appearances? Anything? I know we still got some time for you to get those on the books, but if you had one, please let our people know. Yeah, so we have a few things going on. We're still working on planning some things out. Um, but two of the two things that I know as of right now um, that I'm doing on Friday morning, we're doing some TV for the U.S. Nationals to promote the race on Friday morning. And then we're visiting a children's hospital. Um, I believe I know it's at least Alexis DeJoria and I. Uh, we are going to go visit the local children's hospital um, on behalf of Toyota and speak with some of the children there and do a bit of a show and tell. So I do not know what I'm going to bring. So if anyone in the WFO universe has any suggestions on maybe an item that I can bring and, and talk to the kids about that, um, I'm certainly open to suggestions, but grateful for the opportunity. And um, it'll be nice to give back to the community a bit. What's that creature on the side of your car? It's a tiger, right? A tiger and a cheetah. I cannot well, bring a tiger. <laughs> I'm not bringing a tiger. A real tiger, a stuffed tiger. Bring them some stuffed oh, tigers. Tiger. You can get those, you know? I, can, I thought you meant a real tiger. I'm like, well, what? Joe, come on. I would need help. Maybe someone out there in the WFO universe is more familiar with tigers than yeah. I am. I was thinking like I don't know, a fire suit, a helmet, a Wally, something not a racing tiger. related. All right. Not not well, a I can bring, I can bring it. I can bring a stuffed tiger too. The Wally. And I'll name him Joe. You could give the kids stuffed tigers. That's a nice idea. You get a whole bunch of them and you come in with the stuffed tigers. They'll remember you forever with a little keepsake. If they're able to have that stuff because these kids have got challenges. I've done a toy drive and I know that, believe it or not, there are toys that they can't have. But um, the Wally is always great. The racing helmet that you wear, um, most people have never got the experience of seeing anything remotely like that up close. Maybe a football helmet. Uh, but not a racing helmet and how much more significant and substantial they are. Um, but you're fine. You're a creative guy. You'll, you'll, you'll know. So it's 20 top field dragsters at the moment. And I'm just scanning the cars. Like Doug Foley has got a car that has gone to the semis and finals and is capable of winning. Chris, the Baldwin says they figured out their problem, right? Uh, and that they're going to be good. TJ Zizzo, of course, Dan Mercier has been fast, has made Mission Foods Too Fast, Too Tasty Challenge, which, by the way, you made for Indy, which is going to be great. Mm -hmm. Ida is now out there. Ida, what an amazing debut. This could be, in top fuel, the toughest U.S. Nationals that has ever happened competition-wise. It probably will be. And it's funny because there's 14 full-time cars, but as far as I'm concerned, when you read the names off those lists, that's, I mean, <laughs> they're all full-time cars, really. And a funny story about Krista I was on the starting line, I think maybe Saturday, watching the end of qualifying. And she said, she looks at me, I'm on the scooter, she's on hers. And she goes, listen, you and I are going to have to have a talk about this cheetah thing. You know, I don't know if this is going to fly, both me and you having a cheetahs on the side of our car. I said, her, listen, you got the cheetah thing. That's your cheetah thing. If our cheetah thing starts to look like your cheetah thing, then we have bigger problems. So we're all good there. No worries about that. So that was a funny little conversation. That's great. She stepped um, to you. She, she stepped to me. I like that. I like that. Her it, was, it was a funny conversation. We have two different types of cheetahs um but yeah no it's gonna be tough she's got a really good race car she was telling me that they learned a lot um match racing and they learned a lot when they had spencer driving the car as well um so her and foley and all the others ida obviously had a really impressive debut and um the major organization over there at jcm they're a really talented group so top to bottom everybody out there is going to be super 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 tough first round for, you got to start by trying to qualify for that race before anything else it's it's going to be that good yeah, absolutely. And uh, just to double back the Wally gloves, uh, you know, everybody is weighing in pretty Thanks. much the same things we said. They, they, they're helping you out a, a little bit. Uh, Frisky likes my uh, helmet idea. Um, all right, let's talk uh, countdown. We've been down this road a couple of times, but in my opinion, and we've talked about it in our interviews in the past that you, you haven't been through the countdown the way you're about to go through the countdown as in, full resources, max power. Uh, you guys, uh, you know, now with Randy on the team, like the whole point of this thing was so you could be at your strongest at the end of the year when it is the most challenging you've run all season long. You've hopefully got everything you need. The Vegas, Dallas, Vegas, uh, Pomona stretch run where big performance. You remember Dallas last year, the ability to run down way down into the sixties, I know it's a little different this year with the new front ends on the car, but do you feel like you guys have got the tune up to hang with Alan Johnson in those critical cool weather, really throw down sessions? Well, I think that we're, 
you know, if we don't have it now, we're certainly working on it and we're going to find it because Mike Green and Tommy DeLago are great at what they do. As far as I'm concerned, they're the best in the business. And I'm grateful to be able to work with them and learn from them each and every race. So, yeah, I mean, I think we have an excellent tune up. And if there are areas that we can find improvement in, I'm sure that they will work and find improvement in those areas. But I'm really grateful, honestly, Joe, to be in this position. I'm very thankful to have the resources that we haven't had the opportunity to have in the past. Um, it's really exciting. It's prepared us for this, this stretch, this stretch here in the countdown. This six race stretch is what it's all about. And um, as important as the regular season is, it's about preparing yourself for this, for this really quick and, and really fast and really exciting playoffs. So I'm really excited to have these resources, but also that does not guarantee us anything. It does not guarantee us anything at all. There are teams out there that have resources, that have success, that don't have success, that fall somewhere in between. So um, we still have to do our part both on and off the racetrack to make sure that we find success. But just knowing that we have opportunities we may not have had in the past, um, you know, really makes us makes us very excited. And as we go into the stretch, our relationship with companies like Toyota is going to be absolutely critical because that data and information down to a T, down to a science um, is all going to add up especially as we go throughout, you know, those qualifying and the bonus points and then into the round points. So uh, it all adds up together. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Your jets are two and oh in the preseason. Do you want to give us a <laughs> jet report? Uh, yeah, I'll give you a jet report, but it's the preseason. I mean, there's not much to talk about. I mean, listen, Joe, good. Um, good point. You know, I'm not, look, I'm not, I don't want to get too high. I don't want to get too low. I think they're in a good position. I do think you build teams inside out offensive lines. Good. Defensive line is pretty solid. Um, they're trying to bring in Hassan Reddick, who's in a bit of a contract holdout right now. That's another story. But if they can hold up and they can stay healthy, I think they'll be good. I do also happen to think um, your Miami Dolphins are going to be pretty darn good, too, because they're like a track team. When you watch them play, I'm not really supposed to say this because they're in the Jets division, but they are one of the most fun teams to watch just because of how they move the football um, and their offensive philosophy. So a lot of good football in that division, including the Bills. It'll be fun. It'll be a fun year. Yes. No, it's going to be a very, very fun year. We'll get to take in some of it and hopefully siphon some of those football fans over to watch a little drag racing. Yes. Because, you know, we like football. There's no reason they can't like drag racing too. Justin, great job. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Congratulations on a tremendous win. Uh, happy anniversary to your mom and dad, like 33 years, right. something amazing like that. That's tremendous. And um, your dad was super kind to me out there this weekend. Just great stuff. Congratulations yeah. on your win. And uh, we'll see you in Indy. Thank you, Joe. We're always thinking about you. We appreciate everything that you do. And uh, have a good day, everyone. Appreciate you, WFO Universe. There he goes. Justin Ashley with us here. Thanks, Justin, on WFO Radio. How about that? So we solved a lot of problems there. Look, we're keeping the animals, right? Or it's up to the drivers. Keeping the animals. Hopefully, he's going to bring a helmet, which I think like someone. Who said it? Who's down here saying it? Uh, Joey Rocket. Joey Rocket, right? He's like the rock guy that you see on the starting line. And everybody wonders, like, who is that guy? And I always tell him. It's Joey Rocket. It says, take a barrel valve and explain what it does. I mean, I guess that could be interesting. I don't know. I don't know. It like, depends on the kids that we're talking about, but interesting. Let's put your final comments in the comments section as we on this results show check out the Pro Stock final round on NHRA on Fox with Dallas Glenn picking up the win over Mason McGahey. So good to see Mason take that car to the final round. And, you know, the McGahey family, we want to keep them out there. We want to keep them interested. And uh, final round by Mason gets the job done. But in the end, the points leader, who I, I misidentified, I said that Greg Anderson was a points leader on Saturday. I got a quick text. And, uh, yeah, by like 200 points now, Dallas is leading. Let's watch NHR on Fox. Machines now free stage. In goes Mason McGahey. McGahey's car has problems early. He had a huge starting line advantage of some five one hundredths of a second, but the tune-up was not good enough to carry him to the finish line under power. For Dallas Glenn, 661-3, a 206.95. And a part of me believes, Tony, Dallas might have been thinking a little bit about Aaron Stanfield, and now he took a shot to pull away from him even further. Well, Dallas Glenn picked up another victory here in pro stock. You know, this is a guy who is truly a student of the game. He wins the race and is beating himself up about him late on the tree. You said that you've been flickering the bulb and doing all kinds of goofy stuff, but you're the man holding the wall here today. What was key for you this weekend? This was definitely a team one here. You know, the uh, crew chief, Dave Connolly, Rob Downey, Nate Van Wassenhove, they definitely uh, did their job. My engine tuner, Brian Fleck, he, the, they've, they've been working really hard. We went testing on Monday, made 11 hits. 
about killed me. <laughs> but this is definitely a team. You know, I, I tried to do my job when we needed to, and they definitely did their job all day long and uh, gave me the absolute killer car. And you know, it was a little bit of a gamble getting into this new one, but. I think it's starting to pay off and uh, hopefully we can keep the momentum going. But it's uh, great for Rad Torque Systems, DPF Parts Direct, Summit, Jesse, all the sponsors that uh, keep this going. And uh, you know, I do want to say something for uh, Jerry Haas. You know, he had a little, he scared us a little bit there on Thursday. We were talking to him and then the next thing you know, he's going to the hospital. But that and uh, you know, it's a tough week. Scotty, uh, Scotty Richardson and uh, Scott Bloomquist for the dirt racing community. Dirt racing's big up here and uh, you know, I love dirt racing too. But no, it's, uh, it's just uh, it was it was a great day. So let's go to let's go to Indy and try to get a too fast, too tasty win and uh, seal the deal. Here goes Dallas Glenn. Good kid, man. Like that's he's not a kid, by the way, but he's a good good person, right? Dallas wants to get everybody in, and and there was a lot of talk about Scotty Richardson, Scott Bloomquist. What a shocker that one was. Um, you know, tragic passing. Scotty was ill. Jerry was back at the track. Just to update everybody on all those storylines, Jerry Haas was back at the track on Sunday. It was so great to see him back at the racetrack. And what a race. What a just wild and weird and tremendous race. I want your comments in the comment section. We'll tell you about the rest of the race winners uh, in a moment or two as we begin to wrap up the show. Let's get those comments in the comment section. But I would love to tell you about a couple of things like our great Marvin Rodak. If you're a coffee drinker, if you love coffee, if you're one of those coffee files and you're seeking out the best coffee. I know there's a whole bunch. There's a lot of different companies out there that have various flavors of coffee. But um, what's different is that many of these companies, like they have their flavor or two of coffee and then they market it, right? That's not what Marvin Rodak is doing. Marvin Rodak is getting coffee from around the world. And it is like a micro brew or a small batch bourbon that he is getting, but for coffee. And he's got it from different plantations around the country. And you you can get what, like the style of coffee as opposed to a marketed brand of coffee, if that makes sense. And then what he does is he takes from all of those different blends and he creates his own drag racing themed blends, like our WFO radio blend, like bang the blower, which is heavily caffeinated and different themes like that. The stampede of speed blend, which will be coming back uh, this year. You got to give him a call. 817-924-6821. Ask him or tell him what you like and what you're looking for. And it's going to be a much different and personalized coffee experience. If hopefully that makes sense to you out there, if you're looking to just grab a bag of vacuum pack Folgers crystals and you throw it in your cup and you stir it up and you're good enough, that's not really the experience we're talking about here. We're talking about something a little more curated to you and uh, you will love it. If you're going to go down to the stampede of speed, maybe you connect with Marvin and that way you don't have to pay shipping. And all of a sudden you can roll back with uh, five or 10 pounds of coffee that is roasted fresh per your order. You can get it full bean, like unground. That makes such a big difference. Coffee guys, like you got to get a full bean. You got to grind it yourself. It's so much fresher. Once you grind it, like all that, uh, you know, the good stuff starts leaking out. Anyway, 817-924-6821 plus barbecue grills and hot sauces and spice rub to all our racer friends. If you're looking for a next level grill to uh, for your team, Go to Marvin. He's got all the big names and uh, all the, the the names that people don't really know and fully understand. Maybe they're not the most marketed, but they're actually the best. Rodax Coffee and Grills dot com. Shout out to Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School. Love hearing Fast Jack talk about Frank Hawley. As soon as Fast Jack was announced, Frank was the guy we called. Frank said he's the only guy for the job. Um, think about all that insight and the fact that you could experience it out there at the Dragster Adventure. It's about to be holiday times, guys. It's time to start thinking about what gifts you're going to get the people around you. A trip to the Dragster Adventure. You know, they travel around the country. So they come to you. You get yourself uh, or you get your someone. You get it for yourself. You get it for someone. A certificate to go on the Dragster Adventure. And then they decide at what track and at what time is most convenient for them. But what is most important is that you will have given them something that they will remember for a lifetime. The best possible gift is an experience gift not a thing gift. The thing gifts, they get looked at, maybe they get used and then they get thrown aside and then at some point they become junk and then they get thrown away eventually, right? Let's just be honest with one another. But the experience gifts, 
Those are the ones that are looked upon fondly for years and years. So go to frankhawley.com, give them a call, tell them you heard about it on WFO radio, and they'll, uh, they'll set you up with something. They'll certainly talk to you about it. Also want to mention our Patreon listener club. Guys, these people are amazing folks. It's really incredible each week when, you know, I do content for the Patreons, but I had been off for a couple of weeks. Uh, for those that don't know, I think we know now, I think everybody is up to speed now. We talked about it on the Ignition Show, but my, my father passed a couple of weeks back and just, uh, you know, shocked me and took me out of the out of the seat for a while. And the Patreons got nothing. Right. But finally, the first show back was for the Patreon. And they are like a like it's amazing. They're hanging out with each other and they're making, you know, going to places together on the West Coast and going to races together. It's a community. It's not just a listener club. It's a community of racers that are doing their own things. It's like I almost have lost. Not that I ever aspired for control, but I've lost control. They're doing their own things. They're going on shows and they're supporting each other and they're promoting races and they're going out on tour and they're setting up meetups and they're hanging together at the racetracks. I could never have dreamed that our WFO listener club and they pay a membership, they get behind the scenes content, but would have grown and developed into what it is. So maybe you want to join patreon.com slash WFO radio. And, uh, you know, what can I say? It's amazing. It's an amazing experience. It's an amazing thing. And these people were so kind to me. I got a text from like each and every one of them uh, in my difficult uh, situation, my difficult time. Um, of course, our regular sponsors like Total Seal and FTI, like Foggett and Bernie's and CWT Industries and Phillips and Jesse Converters on board, of course, and Samtech and Rodax. And everybody who helps out Frank Hawley's drag racing school project Pontiac is moving along. A lot of people have been asking about project Pontiac. Like when's it coming? When is it spilled project? When are you going to be on track? And our goal is to be on track at or speed world dragway in Orlando for the division two race in February of next year. It's going to be tough. It's going to be very, very tough, but we're giving it a ride. Also want to remind you, you can watch the show on power tube TV. Power Tube TV is available on Roku. It's one of those streaming channels for the cord cutters, all kinds of car shows. They're talking about doing live events. They're going to be at SEMA. They're going to be at PRI. Power Tube TV has given us our own like WFO uh, portion. Like under their channel, we have our own channel. We can watch the shows and hear the podcast and all kinds of stuff. Thanks to the folks at Power Tube TV. And if you're watching on Power Tube TV right now, I would love for you to reach out to me. Either slide into my DM on Twitter or X WFO Joe or WFO radio, or just send me an email W uh, Joe at WFO radio.com would love to hear from you guys. Um, it's been a great couple of weeks. We've had a great time. Like so good to see Blake Alexander get the win and have great success out there. But let's talk about some of the other winners from Brainerd. No, I did not go into the zoo. Honestly, after our Saturday, Saturday was so long. I got to call the mission foods too fast to taste the challenges and it rained and we had an oil down. We had all kinds of weird stuff go on. Talk to the Capco boys. They were just bummed rear end broke shrapnel went through the cap gear fluid got everywhere. And I talked to the guys on the team and they were, you know, like that's a racing deal. Nobody's to blame for that. It's not like they left the cap off metal went through metal, but they were still bummed out. Right. I was like, guys, that's not your fault, man. Don't, but, th th but they were bummed. And I think that people should know that, like, it's not just a whatever situation. It's a, they felt bad that they had caused downtime. And I admire that. Like, I get it. But uh, Hunter Green winning in top alcohol dragster. Hunter, three for three in two wide final rounds. Because I was like, hey, you're undefeated in final rounds. He goes, no, I didn't win four wide. Then I made the final rounds. Like Hunter Green is going to be another one of our top fuel sensations coming up. Get ready. For Hunter Green, the kid is driven. He's intense. He's a nice kid. He's got a good personality. His dad is cool. Get ready for Hunter Green. Big win right there. Bob McCosh, top alcohol funny car. Got the job done over Sean Bellamy. Bellamy comes over. Big congratulations, but way to go, Bob McCosh, trying to pull himself up into the points battle in top alcohol funny car. And let me tell you, when you got Bellamy and Matty Gordon and Bob McCosh and all those hitters, 
out there on the property. Top alcohol funny car is going to be wild at the U.S. Nationals. Comp eliminator, Bruno Massel. Bruno got the job done. I'm going to rat him out. He was wearing shorts for those final round interviews. Yeah, I did it, Bruno. Just kidding. I mean, I'm having fun with you, but yes, you were wearing shorts. That's why, you know, they framed him up from here. Bruno had an eventful weekend. Very fun. But the guy is an incredible performer on the racetrack. And you see him out there behind the camera and he's asking questions and doing interviews. And the fact that he can put that in a box and put the box down and go pick up the race car box and go out there and perform, had Cody Cronin, his crew chief, and be so successful against the best in the world is really amazing. Um, congratulations to Bruno on that. Great success. In Superstock, it was Jason DeForest. Was dead zero in the final round, if memory serves me right. Brian Anderson in Stock Eliminator. He had a little fun with me as I was doing the interviews. This guy had a 129 reaction time in round one. And I was on the mic, and I was like, yeah, it's not looking good for Brian. And he somehow pulled it out. His opponent made a mistake. And I said, if he goes on to win this race, he's going to look back at that run as, you know, fortunate. Well, I forgot all about that because that's my curse. The curse of once it has happened, I am looking forward as opposed to backward. And I, I often, unfortunately, forget little things like that. And maybe I'm not the only one. Maybe everybody does. But I can only tell you that this is my my challenge is to remember as many little details as is possible. And I forgot that one. And Brian's like, no, man, I came back and won the race. I did it. His first round win at the national event level, his first race win at the national event level. Just an amazing experience. So congratulations to Brian. Mike Cheney and Supercomp got the job done. Tom Carlson and Supergas, along with his grandson, a little grandfather, grandson, double up. His grandson, Bodie, won in uh, the Junior Dragster Shootout, which is amazing. Wade Samuel won in Super Street. I was over there talking to Wade, quizzing him. How much is this car weigh, Wade? What are you doing with this car, Wade? And uh, Wade's telling me, not knowing that I'm building a super street car as well. That is a full chassis car, had aluminum floor, had a, aluminum everything. It was still weighed 2,900 pounds. Project Pontiac is going to weigh about 3,300 pounds. So you can have me buy about 250 pounds. Um, that's significant. But Wade got the job done. Top sportsman was Darren Butler, a first time winner. Kendra Larson and top dragster. The Larson family had an unbelievable weekend. Not only was Trevor crowned champion, got his ring, got his jacket. They got to hang out in the V, which is what we call between the two top fuel cars down there and experience nitro, which they had never done. And they put up a nice, very nice post. And they both went deep into the rounds. Trevor got to the final runner up. Kendra won the race. You know, like it doesn't get much better than that kind of experience. Uh, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Louis Werble won pro pro mod sled. Larry Spider-Man McBride, one top fuel motorcycle. Greg Anderson, Austin Proc, and Antron Brown won uh, the Too Fast, Too Tasties. And the results section of NHRA.com says that Tater Troyer won Factory Stock Showdown, but it was not Tater Troyer. It was Scott Libisher, and I know that because Scott, first of all, I'm friends with Tater, but I'm also friends with Scott. And Scott had been fighting so hard for that win. And uh, he had kind of come down by the time we had done the interview, but it was a really great experience for me to know, you know, some of the teams kind of brought me in and, and they didn't tell me about what's going on and give me a little insight so I can increase my knowledge. Um, you got to have people that, that support you and help you. And, and Scott and, uh, and Alex and the guys over there, um, they finally broke through, man. They finally broke through after traveling like thousands and thousands of miles and spending, hundreds of thousands of dollars and scott is holding his first wally in flex jet factory stock showdown that was a tremendous tremendous thing to see um very exciting and that'll do it for the event the lucas oil nationals didn't go into the zoo honestly you want to know the real reason one old age you know just wasn't feeling it guys just i'm not really feeling it i'm not all the way back and number two there was mud out there i'm not going to get all covered in mud right to get on a plane, all my, you know, stuff covered in mud because hanging out in the zoo. So this year I took off from the zoo. All right. Final comments in the comments section, and then we'll get up on out of here. And the next show you'll hear will be, we're going to do a couple of Toyota U S nationals preview programs, right? 
the return of Alan Reinhardt to WFO, right? Um, and we're going to look ahead to the biggest drag race on the planet. And hopefully everybody that's WFO will be out there genuinely recruiting your friends and family to lock in and experience this event, either in person on NHRA TV or on NHRA on Fox, like plan a watch party, order some food, get some beverages, invite your neighbors. Why are you having this party? I'm having this party to celebrate the U.S. Nationals. What is the U.S. Nationals? It's the biggest drag race on the planet. It's a fun race. How about you fill out your drag race bracket bonanza bracket? How about you go to play NHRA and place a wager? How about you create that game with the boxes? Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like that's like wear your gear all week long until next week, like NHRA gear every day of the week leading into Indy first qualifying session. These are the little gadgets, the little gizmos that fans of drag racing and hopefully like all the shows, like let's get everybody to wear their gear for this next two weeks. Like wear your NHRA gear ev always when you're going out to the Home Depot, when you're going to Menards, when you're going to Lowe's, when you're going to your local hardware store, Ace, right? Like wear your NHRA gear. Everybody rep their gear, like pull out the shirts, pull out the gear so that everyone is like, oh, I'm seeing something is happening out there in the world. I think it works. You don't have to participate with my stupidity. You know, if you think it's dumb, that's your business. Your business. Let's see. All right, here we go. Starting off with Blake. Final comments. Joe, I explained to my 78-year-old pastor how to describe the WFO. He calls me the same times to talk about WFO notifications in NHRA news. Thank you, Blake. Good job, Blake. That's one under Blake's name because a big Ponzi scheme, WFO, you'd have one under you. Justin, uh, Ashley is always a great interview. Kimmy wants to have, have Slugger on the show. I'll tell you the story. I'll tell you the story. I have said to Slugger several times, I would love to have you on WFO radio. And he hasn't flat out refused, but he has given me the vibe that he's not that into it. You know, talk to the people from Toyota and maybe I could do it. It's like, you know, putting up barriers, right? Like the, the, the guy got to get the vibe. I got to get the feeling that you want to be on the show. If you don't want to be on the show, eh. but Kimmy wants you on the show slugger. And so because this show is all about what the audience wants until they want something that I don't want. I'm going to try again. We'll work on getting Slugger on the show, especially after that Herculean effort. Let's talk about J.R. Todd. First of all, J.R. Todd's best race as a drag racing personality, in my opinion. J.R., when he was down, he told you he was down. When he was up, he told you he was up, and he talked about why he was down in the interview, and he threw the gloves and all of that stuff, man. That's how you earn fans fans don't just become your fan just because you won that's not enough they want to know the person and man i'm watching jr up there thinking like man this is great compelling stuff and i would call that an instant classic brian loans is already creating the future nitro time machine for the 2024 lucas oil nationals the time that ron caps lent his body to jr todd and seeing Todd Smith swinging a hammer, smacking the heck out of something back there. Amazing. I went over to Chad Head. Give credit to Jason Galvin, who did a great job on the mic. Excellent work by Jason Galvin, by the way. To think backward and forward, they have already switched to a backup car. So they can't just roll out another backup car. And do they even have another body? He said that on the mic. And I went right over to Chad head. And I said, Chad, do you guys have another body? And he goes like, you know, and Chad, hopefully you don't mind me sharing this, but this is the color of the story. He said, no. And then he said, F and got on his scooter and rode away. That's the kind of stuff that will keep people coming back and subscribe to NHRA every week to follow the journey of humans, you know, 12,000 horsepower nitro cars. They're cool, but people root for people. They don't root for cars. I mean, maybe back in the day and the tiger on the side of Justin's car, super cool. I could see kids rooting for it, but like that kind of effort and Ron caps, you know, genius, by the way, like, I don't know what was the reason the Napa car was the one, but, and I talked to slugger on the plane. I was like, uh, why not spec the tree? 
on everything. And he says it's very close. And that's why we were able to do it. He says it's very close. But the PBRC cars and, and Coletta cars, he goes, you know, like they're a little different. Uh, PBRC uh, is uh, JR's car as well. But there were some differences in the mounting locations, which caused all of that. But what an amazing story. The Ida story. I did an interview with Ida early in the week. She was great. Said, never really got nervous. And went up there and red lighted for the first time in her career. Exactly. Comes into the NHRA, does a fantastic job, got put into a situation. Something happened that had never happened in her career before. What does that tell you about the level of competition in the NHRA? What does it tell you? AJ says, great show. Latoya says, great show. I'm going to see her in Indy. She's going to be out there with Big Mac, Mac Neil Freeman. Jeff Rice says the NHRA.TV coverage was great. You know, one of the things that I, you know, like I think we should be pushing NHRA.TV a lot harder than we are. It's the super diehard experience. You watch every run that goes down the racetrack. It doesn't, you know, it's a different show than what happens on NHRA on Fox. But as far as subscriber numbers, which I don't know what they are, but if we could ju juice those subscriber numbers up to like, uh, you know, stratospheric uh, levels, then that would also bring more resources. Like everybody needs to be watching NHRA TV, guys. I know so many diehard fans that frankly, like, you know, oh, subscribe, uh, you know, my net, my phone, I got a flip phone. Like it's too bad because it's such a great uh, access point. Ralph says, uh, Good seeing all of you guys. Hey, Ralphie, thank you very much. Great show. Let's see what else. Looking for comments. To Wally, great show. It's Kara, have a great day. John Force Racing, super fan. The Yeti, I didn't see the Yeti out there. He's in a picture in the winter circle. I got out of there, guys. I had three hours back to Minneapolis after that weekend. Early flight. Really cool to see all the teams help with the JR body situation. Joe, I've... Uh, Got to commend you on your performance this weekend on NHRA.TV. Well, well done, sir. Excellent show. Thank you for the self-serving comment there, uh, Frisky. Yeah, I, I called the, I like doing the Saturday stuff, man. I'm getting the opportunity to call the show on Saturday. And, you know, you do it once, just like driving a car. It happens pretty quick. You do it twice, things start to slow down. The amount of reps that I get, whoever knows how many there will be, but I really enjoyed uh, the mission foods races, racing of consequence, qualifying efforts, uh, good stuff. I am inherently me. I can't be any different. I can't be someone else. I can't be Alan. Can't be Jason. Can't be big Mac. Can't be Steve Evans. This is it. This is me. If you hate me like vile poison, like some of you do, you know, I'm sorry. This is just it. Can't change. Learned that a long time ago. Just gotta be what it is. And, um, I got some positive feedback. It was great to see the Toyota teams helping out. Well, if you're a drag racing fan and you're an old school fan and you ever had a reservation about Toyota being involved in the sport, let me just talk to you for one second. It's got to be time to get over it. Toyota. Oh my goodness. There's no title sponsor for the U S nationals who comes in to save the day. Toyota. Who's helping out with this technical team and all these teams and out there and promoting and making it happen. Toyota, who's got a great series of marketing and television on TV, promoting drag racing, showcasing their drivers, showcasing the sport, not only on drag racing shows, but on regular shows and on NASCAR shows, Toyota. So, you know, old habits die hard. They do. It's time to reevaluate your stance on the folks at Toyota, because without Toyota, my goodness. Drag racing would not be what it is. Thank you, Toyota. They've done a tremendous job. Um, name the one motorsport where competing teams band together to help out the competitor that would otherwise be uh, loading parts into the trailer instead of making the next round. Exactly, Jim. Exactly. Scott Bloomquist died in a plane that can fly at 40 miles an hour, probably 65 FS, 65 horsepower. I don't think he chose that uh, vessel as deliberate exit. Um, I'm listen, Kimmy, don't speculate. You know, people are speculating. I don't, that's the last thing that anybody wants to know, wants to hear, right? All we know, here's where we, where we spend time right now. Scott, Scott Bloomquist is the John force 
of his sport. And everybody that loves that stuff. And I remember when I was on XM Satellite Radio doing NASCAR radio, and I got a lot of insight into the dirt late model universe. And it's being in South Florida, it's just not my ultimate motorsports passion, but I appreciate who they are, what they did, and the dedication. And Scott Bloomquist, a unique and over the top personality. And we've lost him. And it's a sad day for motorsports. And really, you know, other than the details, like they don't matter. His family is hurting and his fellow racers are hurting and everybody that admired him is hurting right now. And that's as far as I need to go. Galvin said, you guys were wiped out at the end of the day on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Saturday was a tough day. Saturday was tough. And you know, it's all relative. We're not digging ditches. So it's not tough. Like I got blisters on my hands and my lower back hurts. It's more like your brain hurts and your vocal cords hurt. Speaking of which, I should stop talking any second. But these comments are so good. Joe, can you uh, touch on where the WFO event will be next week? Will you also be bringing WFO items to purchase? I cannot bring WFO items to purchase because that's an NHRA thing and it's an NHRA event. I can't be like selling out of the trunk. You know, that's not right. But if you want a WFO shirt, that is the official shirt, the official podcast shirt, go to Hot Rod Randy's Horsepower Headquarters on the Midway and get it there. And it's the best shirt because it's got Project Pontiac on the back and it's got me holding the microphone and uh, WFO on the front. You could get a couple of WFO stickers with it. Go see Keelan at Hot Rod Randy's Horsepower Headquarters in Indy and say, WFO, I want the WFO shirt. You could pick up some stickers. Anyone can pick up some stickers there. And it's part of the NHRA t-shirt ecosystem. If you want to order something online prior to the event, the link is in the chat, but it's not the same shirt. Hot Rod Randy's has the exclusive to the official WFO radio podcast shirt with me and Project Pontiac on. It's cool, man. We worked on designing it and it's been very popular as well. So that's where you get it. Gareth, WFO listener. Says he likes the appear the best appearing car this week. Shout out to Brian Loads. It happened to be Gareth's team car. Gareth and his dad both got their first NHRA national event round wins this past week. I was on the mic for Gareth's, and he happened to be helping out another gentleman who won the best appearing car. It was beautiful. Thank you, Brian Loans, for stepping up. He was there on Thursday watching the cars and gave us a great best appearing car. Good job, Loans. It's a collab. I make the final call, but I appreciate a little help from my friends. Great interviews today. I've, and yes, Nighthawk. Alan will return to WFO next week and return on Indy. Our long national nightmare is over. That would be a great idea, except I'm going to be there. Okay, well, yeah. You don't get NHRA.TV. I get it. I'll be watching NHRA TV like always. Wear your WFO Joe uh, shirt when pushing top fuel cars. Right. I saw you. I saw you, Yeti. Nice photo. You got a shout out on my Twitter feed today. Oh, Gary. I Like, that's such a small and old thing. I have a member shirt, though. You know, who knows why decisions are made. It's got to be about the numbers in the end, Gary. You still get your pen. You still get all your decals. You still get your discounts. You still get tickets uh, off. You get a discount to NHRA TV. You get all kinds of good stuff. The t-shirt, you don't get it. Sorry. You know, I, I will take your concept and put it in the suggestion box. I do agree with you. The member t-shirt was cool. And also smart because people would wear the member t-shirt and people out there would say, what are you a member of? What do you mean? What is that? I will, listen, Gary, thank you. I will talk to someone this coming week about bringing back the member t-shirt. I will do that. Okay? Because of you, bud. No joke. That's what WFO is. You complain. I get annoyed. Think about it. There's some truth to it. I bring it. And I risk my job to get your idea on the table. That's how it works. I'm not risking my job. A uh, situation just might be where every manufacturer has a spec tree for the body mount. I, I thought about that. Spec trees. Uh, I don't know. I'll ask about that. NHRA TV is great. I can't believe it took me this long to subscribe to NHRA.TV. It's the best. 
How about those 13 trip zero lights during the event, even in junior drags for Memphis Lonnie? I don't know where you got that stat. I don't know that stat. If you got that stat, that's an amazing stat. And it was a bizarre weekend all around. It was one of the great events with all the yips and the red lights and the launch of double steps and perfect lights and a perfect run. Gabe Killian, who was on the mic, who's just 15, 16 years old now, the local announcer, he and Justin did a great job. Justin Dorfler and Gabe Killian. They're both from that area. They both did a tremendous job helping out Galvin and myself. Tony Bogolo returning to racing at Beach Bend this weekend. So is Jason Galvin, by the way, be racing down there. Thanks for a great show. Go Team Pontiac. Thank you very much. The story about the grandfather and the grandson was tremendous. Garrett says, we appreciate it, Joe. It was nice having you call the round. Had my WFO shirt on on the line with uh, Vincent Nobile and Mountain Motor Pro Stock and the Super Street car. Yeah, I, you know, wear your WFO gear, guys, so you can find each other, right? I just want the shirt, Joe. That, I know. <laughs> we all want the shirt. Henry says, hit the like button. And don't forget to answer our YouTube comments question. Galvin said it on the mic. There were 13 trip zero lights. Didn't hear him say that. Must have been when I was down on the top end. I have every member pin. I have many member pins. Todd Caps reminded me of Bernstein Blue Max back in the day. And that was the comment that Del Worsham said to Ron. It was an instant classic. Whenever something like that happens, something bizarre, weird, and the teams bond together to help JR and that team and Todd and Jono and all those guys, Michael James, get out there on the track. Like that's what our sport is all about. And it was an amazing moment. You know, they didn't win. Big deal. But they did win. What was the most interesting story of the race? That was. And, you know, Ida and Blake are up there and in the mix. But J.R. Todd, they probably got the most television time in seconds for DHL and Napa. Blake wants to know if I'll have Bruno on the show. I would love to have Bruno. Bruno's a very busy guy, guys. You know, like very busy. Very busy character. Could be part of the indie preview. Talk a little bit about all that great comp eliminator stuff that's going on. Speaking of which, speaking of gear, guys... The WFO gear is on sale. The link is in the chat section. I would encourage you to get yours. Order it now so you can get it before Indy. Shirts and hats and fire shirts. We're going to have jet cars in Indy. I don't know. Great for Christmas gifts, too. Get yourself a hoodie. The Miami Hollywood Speedway shirt. Bob Malloy was like, Joe, I brought my shirt, which is super cool. Mike Lewis. Mike Lewis is like, I made my first top fuel run or some, some amazing stat at Miami Hollywood. First top fuel night run at Miami Hollywood Speedway. Just amazing. Parker Theobald. Why not both? Why not both? Yeah, trying to talking about Project Pontiac. Guys, like um, working real hard to lower expectations. Also working real hard to get things done with Project Pontiac. Gary Stinnett doing a great job. Folks at Foggett, Total Seal. Like, if you really want Project Pontiac to be done, go buy a can of Foggett. <laughs> and so many people. Folks at Edelbrock helping us out. So many people. Stroud Technologies helping us out. So many people. Headman Hustler Headers helping us out. So many people helping out to get Project Pontiac on the track so we can go Super Street Racing. Have a great uh, day and fellow racing nuts. Exactly. And remember, in the comments section on YouTube, when you're sharing it for everybody as part of the pre-race hype for the U.S. Nationals, answer the question, should the Skag cars keep the animal characters on for the U.S. Nationals? Answer that question and tell us why. Congratulations, Blake. Congratulations, Justin. Thank you, everyone, for watching this show, this little show that we know as WFO. Appreciate you all. Like this show? Want more? Then head to WatchPTTV.com, the new 100% free PowerTube TV streaming network. Home of the best classic and new motorsports racing and build shows on the web.